Sandra did not think much of it when she found her cat Missy in the sink that morning. To her knowledge, it had never been in there before, and now it seemed like that animal did not want to leave the sink under any circumstances. And when Sandra found out way did this was, she could barely believe it. The police rushed towards Sandra as soon as possible. She had locked her cat Missy in another room for now and was impatiently waiting at her sink for the officers to arrive. All she could do was pray that this was not what she thought it was, but the officers quickly drove that hope into the ground as it did not take them long to determine that something was seriously wrong here. They needed to get into the sewers below Sandra's house immediately. There was no time to waste anymore. Sandra is horrified that she did not realize this sooner. Maybe if she had reacted when Missy was first in the sink, Things could have been different, but why was Sandra's cat in the sink? Why did she feel the need to call the police? And what would the officers find in the sewer? Normally Sandra's cat Missy would run towards her bedroom door the moment that it would open up, hoping for food and attention. It was just the two of them living in the house, and so Sandra was the indoor cat's only source of company. But today, the animal was nowhere to be seen. Sandra immediately started to worry. She had made great efforts cat-proofing the house, but Missy still often managed to get herself into some tricky situations. What if something had happened during the night that the cat could not get herself away from? Sandra started calling out for Missy throughout the house, and even started shaking a package of her favorite snack, something that always guaranteed that the cat would come rushing toward her as fast as it could. But not this time. The longer Sandra was searching, the more worried she got. Could the animal possibly have found a way out and run away? She always made sure that the doors were locked when she went to sleep. But when she saw the open bathroom door, she was stopped in her tracks by a devastating realization. She had cracked the window of the bathroom the night before so that steam from her shower could get out. She had been planning to close the door behind her, but she had obviously forgotten that. Missy had to have escaped from here. Or did she? Sandra ran into the bathroom with tears in her eyes, thinking that she might never see her cat again. And the window was indeed still open, but to the biggest relief that Sandra had ever felt. She also found Missy in that bathroom. The cat was lying in the sink. The animal actually did not even look up when Sandra went into the room, even though she was nearly shouting the animal's name and still shaking the treats around. It seemed dead set on sniffing and scratching the sink's exit as its life depended on it. At that moment, it did not even cross Sandra's mind that something might be going on with the sin. She was just so overcome with emotions that she still had her cat that there was no room in her thoughts for anything else. She picked up the animal to hug it tightly and closed the bathroom door behind her. Missy tried to get out of the grip at first, but soon just seemed to surrender to all the hugs and kisses. And when the treats were poured into the animal's bowl, it waited no time getting them down. But nearly right after eating, Missy made her way back to the now-closed bathroom door and started light scratching it while meowing. It was obvious that the cat wanted to get inside, but Sandra was not planning on letting the animal back in for now. If Missy got into the sink again, there was a good chance that she could turn on the water which would then be running the whole day. She had to get to work now and thus would not be able to keep on that. Missy would just have to find another way of entertaining herself. Because of the search for Missy, Sandra was already late for work, so she had to start rushing a bit. When she walked towards her car, she was greeted by a stranger and foul smell that she could not place and she also had no time to place. She just figured that there was something wrong with the sewers or something and paid little mind to it. But she could have never guessed that the behavior of her cat and the smell were very much related. Missy knew something that Sandra didn't. Sandra's workday went by relatively uneventful, and her mind started to drift back to the morning, with her emotions having calmed down a bit and her having some more time now. She suddenly started to wonder what it was that Missy was doing in the sink. The fact that the cat could not be tempted away from there even by treats was very strange and that it immediately went back to begging at the closed door showed that there was really something going on there. She had ignored it that morning, but now she could not stop thinking about the sink. At the end of her shift, Sandra immediately drove home and lo, and behold, Missy was still in the closed bathroom room. She was only now sleeping next to it as opposed to trying to get in. 
Bert when Sandra came into the house. The cat started very quickly waking up. With the window now closed, Sandra was confident in opening the bathroom door again, and Missy jumped into the sink within a millisecond and started sniffing at the drain. But something had changed in this room during the day, and Sandra noticed it in an instant. The smell. It was a bit faint still, but unmistakably the same as she had smelled in the street that morning. It had also still been there when she got home. If it was coming out of the sink, it was obvious that something was going on with the sewers, but this was not a normal nasty sewer smell. Sandra could not place it yet, but she just sensed that something was not right there. She had no way of verifying what this smell was herself, and so she called the police in the hopes that they could come to check it out. But they were skeptical at first. There were not many things more common than a strange smell coming from the sewers. They were basically made for those in nine-tenth times. If something was really going on down there, it would flush itself out in no time. But Sandra stayed adamant that they needed to come to check it out. Missy had not been reacting this way for nothing, and Sandra trusted the instincts of her cat. And soon enough, she had managed to convince the officer to send somebody out to come and check it out. And they would not regret their decision. About 20 minutes later, an officer arrived. He was knocking on Sandra's door, and when Sandra opened up, it was a young officer that was checking his phone. He wanted coffee first and didn't seem too eager to check out the sewer. Little did he know, the officer clearly had in mind to convince Sandra to have a specialist check out the sewer. He was young and ambitious, so a call like this was something to finish as soon as possible. The officer was about to leave and Sandra agreed if he'd take a look at Missy first. He agreed. The officer arrived in the bathroom, noticed the smell, and then saw the obsessive behavior of the cat. He came closer but was aggressively approached by Missy when he tried to move her. Now he started to worry. The combination of the smell and alarmed Sandra, and the strange behavior of the cat made the officer decide to call for backup. But during his call, he was told that not many officers were available because many of them were at homes with similar problems. What was going on? The officer was on his own, and Sandra was worried. Was this the help she needed? She didn't have much time to think it over. Could you remove the cat, lady? It's time to take a look, the officer said. Sandra tempted Missy to leave the sink and took her in her arms. The officer slowly prepares the sink to be examined. He looks hesitant. Sandra feels anxious and wants to keep Missy occupied, so she decides to leave the bathroom. A few minutes passed, and her anxiety seemed right after these few minutes. The officers rushed out of the bathroom, closed the door, and demanded the key to the door. Sandra was overwhelmed. What did the officer find in the sink? There was no time for questions. The officer shut down the door and told Sandra to come with him. The officer was very persistent but didn't put Sandra in handcuffs. She was relieved to be innocent but was still very alarmed by the reaction of the officer. What was going on in her home? Would she ever be able to return home after this? Just when Sandra and the officer were about to leave, Sandra saw the stranger of earlier that day walking toward the building. She didn't recognize him as a resident or a neighbor, but it was already the second time she saw him today. Sandra was sure to remember his face. Sandra arrives at the station and gets installed in a comfortable room at the station. She is offered coffee and a piece of cake. She is even offered to ask a friend or family over for her comfort. It was clear that Sandra was innocent, but all the more reason to assume something terrible was going on. Sandra's room at the station had a big window. Trying to calm herself down while drinking some relaxing tea, she looked through the window. She was surprised to see more and more police officers coming in. They all surrounded the young officer, who had a lot to tell. Soon afterward, a friendly officer joined Sandra in her room. She looked at Missy in a concerted way. Without looking up at Sandra, she said, Madam, please tell me everything that happened today, from beginning to start. Very soon after, the police would be very grateful. Sandra repeated everything she had already told so far. The officer didn't seem to be hearing what she wanted. The officer was about to leave, but then Sandra thought of the stranger she had seen twice that day. Officer, wait, she yelled. Sandra quickly told the officer about the stranger. The officer wrote everything down and thanked Sandra for this information. All of the sudden, the officer stood up, closed the blinds of the room, and locked the door. This time, Sandra feels very alarmed. 
Until now, she figured she was the victim, but she felt like a prisoner by now. What did this stranger have to do with it? And why was Sandra kept in the dark, even though she was the one who was about to lose her home? Questions that were soon to be answered. Sandra makes up her mind and decides to call her lawyer. Her lawyer is very shocked to hear about everything. He tells Sandra to stay in the room and wait for him. You have to come right away, Sandra says, now that she hears a lot of noises coming from the police officers. Only ten minutes later, Sandra's lawyer arrives. When he enters the room, Sandra overhears the police making plans to make their way to Sandra's home. Sandra is eager to hear more, but the door is closed right away. What were they keeping from her? Sandra's lawyer advised her to wait for now. He seems to think it might be a misunderstanding, but then the lawyer sees Missy. Sandra didn't mention Missy before to the lawyer. I now the lawyer is much more alarmed because Missy reminds him of a former case that didn't end too well. Sandra's first concern is her cat. She knows her lawyer can't share too much information about former cases, but insists on making sure Missy is safe. Her lawyer is certain of Missy's safety, but immediately says he needs to talk to the police. He leaves the room. A few minutes pass. Sandra sees her lawyer come in, who wipes the sweat off his forehead. He talked to the officer in command and made a discovery. During the time Sandra was locked away in the room and awaiting her faith, the police made an arrest. Sandra is invited to the office of the leading officer. She and her lawyer entered the room, where she sat down in tension. The officer revealed that they had arrested the stranger. Sandra is relieved that something was done, but is still unsure about what was going on, that the truth was about to be revealed. The officer tells Sandra that they're currently at her home, fixing the situation. Sandra responds, what is going on? What is the strange smell and what had the stranger to do with it? The officer replies calmly, that will all become clear if you have a look yourself. Are you sure you want to know? Sandra is sure. They get in a police car and are escorted to Sandra's building. The leading officer himself drives Sandra and her lawyer. Sandra realizes the serious nature of what is going on. They soon arrive, and Sandra can barely see her home. All sorts of special cleaning forces and a lot of police officers are around the building. Sandra comes closer and is led to the sewer below the building. The leading officer comes along and reveals the truth. A created virus was released in the sewer, causing many rats to die. The smell was a result of all these poor deceased rats. The stranger turned out to be the scientist responsible for creating the virus. He feared the high amount of rats, and this was his way of countering this. The police were looking for him, even before all of this. Sandra was allowed to return home later that night. She and Missy have been happily living there together ever since. 